Hey guys, it's Mr. Vedi and let's start our video lecture. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about graphs of trigonometric functions. So the trigonometric functions we've gone over is sine, cosine, tangent, and their reciprocals. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to graph them. Before we had unit circle points, we're going to take those points and put them on a traditional Cartesian coordinate plane. So in this lecture, we're going to have a lot of things that you're going to need to do. So, the first is you're going to have to follow along. Um, I'm going to have some XY tables for sine and cosine. You'll see what they look like and you'll be responsible for showing me them filled in. So, when you come in tomorrow, I'm going to expect to see those on your desk as a part of proof that you've watched the video, that you filled in these values while watching the video. Number two, uh, you're going to need to show me the graphs of sine and cosine. So, we're going to do those together. So, I'm going to need to see those graphs. And three, uh, at the end, I'm going to go over your own little assignment. And I actually want you guys to try to think of how vertical compressions, horizontal compressions, vertical expansions, and horizontal expansions look in a trigonometric function. So let's get started. So first thing I want you to do is on a sheet of paper, get a blank sheet of paper, which is what I'll see tomorrow, and... I want you to have an XY table. And in your X is going to be a theta, meaning an angle measure. And then in your Y is going to be your sine of theta. So, for example, if I have my theta as, say, 0, and then I have a sine of theta, that means I'm going to do sine of 0. So if you go ahead and if you look on your unit circle, you can see that sine of zero degrees or zero radians is zero. And then I want you to fill in the rest of this. So pi over two, look at what sine of pi over two is. And sine of pi over two, I go up here, I see pi over two. And sine of pi over two is one. So I'd fill in one there. So go ahead, pause the video, and fill in the rest of the table. Okay, hopefully you filled in the rest of the table. And what now I want you to do is I want you to draw this X and Y graph. So go ahead if you need to, pause the video and draw this X and Y graph and plot all of your points on it. Notice my X axis, I have all of my angle measures, and my Y axis is going to be my outputs, meaning whatever sine of theta is. So go ahead, pause the video and fill this in. All right, so this is what the graph of the sine function looks like. So after you've filled in those points, we're going to look at some key points. We're going to look at some maximums and some intersects. So you should have got this for your theta. Um, when you had theta of 0, sine was 0. We found that together, as we did pi over 2 and 1. Uh, if you plug in sine of pi, it's going to be 0, and then if we plug in sine of 3 pi over 2, that's negative 1, and of 2 pi is 0. So you should have gotten all these points on both sides. What you need to do now is connect those points with a smooth curve. So don't make it jaggedy or anything, kind of smoothly go up and down and have it so it looks like it's curving, each of the points connected. And what you should get is something that looks like that. So this entire graph, you see, is the graph of sine. That's just the plain old parent function sine. Uh, a few characteristics. It's what we call periodic, meaning that it repeats itself in the same exact pattern. Uh, also, notice from 0 to 2 pi, that's what we call a period. So that's the part of the function that ends up repeating itself over and over again. And for a basic sine function, the period is how long? Well, it's from 0 to 2 pi, so it's a 2 pi long function. So the period is 2 pi. Um, another thing to look at is the height of the function. So the height of the function goes from over here, what we see is 0, and it goes up to 1. So here, the what we call the height of the function, and another way of saying the height of the function is the amplitude the amplitude of the function, so that's an A for amplitude, the amplitude of the function is 1, and that means it goes up 1. 
All right, so these are some basic characteristics of a sine function. So let's look at a cosine function. So I want you to do the same exact thing for cosine, meaning fill in the table for the cosine value. So if theta is 0, you're going to plug in cosine of 0. Cosine of 0, that's our x coordinate, that's going to be 1. So you'd plug in a 1 right there. And go ahead and fill in the rest of the table. So press pause and fill in the rest of the video. Alright, and then now when you're done with that, go ahead and draw your x and y. Go ahead and get your points. Negative 1 to 1 is my range, and I'm going to have a domain, and I'm going to plug in these values. And then just use your table to fill in and plot those points. And connect them with that smooth line like you did before. This is very similar to sine. So if you need to, you can pause the video and do that. Alright, so again, looking at some key points, these are the points you should have gotten for cosine. Notice that when we plugged in 0, for sine we got the cosine of, or the sine of 0 was 0, the, sine, the cosine of 0 is 1 for cosine, so it's going to look a bit different. We automatically know right off the bat that those points are going to be a bit different. Uh, if I connected it with a smooth line, we'd once again get a curve, and that curve is going to be periodic, same thing, it's going to go up and down, and its period over here, this is a bit messed up, but its period should also be 2 pi, so it should extend to 2 pi. So that means that the period is going to be from 0 to 2 pi, and then it's going to repeat itself. So notice how it ends up repeating itself. Look at the red over here, how it ends, look at how it ends, and then look at how it just starts repeating itself. So it starts, it's very symmetric. So notice this is the cosine of x. So this is the function of cosine of x. Remember, all these things are still functions. They're just like when we worked with x squared and x cubed. They're all functions. So another thing to notice, let's look at the amplitude, the height. So we have the period, which is 2 pi. The height, well, it also goes up to 1. So cosine and sine have the same amplitude. It's 1. All right. So these are the basic characteristics of a sine and cosine function. We're going to go very in more in depth to, in class tomorrow. But I also have a job for you guys. So remember we went over vertical uh, expansion and compression and horizontal expansion and compression. What I need you guys to do is I want you guys to try to formulate with this formula, right, with this function right here. So this looks exactly like something like f of x of, say, x squared. Just think of it like that. How would you vertically expand sine theta? How would you vertically compress it? How would you horizontally expand it? And how would you horizontally compress this? And you guys should already know how to do this because we've talked about how we do this with functions. So try to apply the knowledge that we already know to this stuff, and it'll really help us for tomorrow. So again, make sure you have that sheet of paper filled out with all the notes for tomorrow. All right, have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.